If you've been watching my series on React, if you've kept up this far, you actually know quite a bit about React as far as the official React library goes. So now we're going to learn Flux. React by default doesn't really give you any specific way to manage all the data for your application. It just has the ability to receive props, right? You can inject props into a component and the component handles that, but the, the React library doesn't really tell you how to give it components, where to store your data. That's why it's called just a view layer. React calls itself just a view layer. Whereas the actual framework, uh, as compared to say Angular or Backbone, uh, there really is no framework with React. You get to create your own or use another framework. And that's where Flux comes in. Flux is not a framework. It's a pattern uh, that Facebook has laid out a great pattern for building React frameworks. So using Flux, you can build your own. That's very stable, very good. Um, or you can use another Flux-based framework that's out there. There are quite a few. Some of them work differently than others, but they generally stick to this Flux pattern. So what is the Flux pattern? Well, you have your React components, and those are all your components. And components do two things in a Flux pattern. They fire off actions, and they listen to stores. So they fire off actions saying, hey, maybe say it's a to-do list. Add a new to-do. That's a action. And then whenever the to-do list store updates, it receives an event for that, and it updates itself with all the new to-dos. That's, that's what the components are aware of. Components fire off actions. They don't care what happens. They just know that if I'm listening to the to-do list store and the to-do list store updates, then I'm going to change. If you're coming from a Backbone.js world, a store is a collection. If you're coming from an Angular world, a store is maybe more like a service. There's really no concept of stores in Angular at this point. So that's what the components do. They listen to stores for changes and they can interact with stores. They can say, hey, give me all to-dos. Give me to-dos that match my filter, uh, et cetera. So components can maybe query a store for information just like you would with a Backbone.js collection. And that's what components do. Actions are aware of one thing only. They pipe an action to the dispatcher. They don't care what happens after that, but actions will pipe an action to a dispatcher. Now, an action might create multiple actions. We'll get into that in a minute. And then the dispatcher is basically a pub sub if you, know what a pub, if you don't know what a pub sub is, you'll want to watch my video on that. It's a pattern of communicating events. It's basically a pub sub with one major difference. Pub sub, every module can subscribe to a specific event or a specific set of events and get notified when that event takes place. Whereas a flux dispatcher takes every single event that comes through and sends it to every single subscriber. So if you have four stores that are registered to the dispatcher, those four stores get every single event. And so that's the biggest change is a store only reacts to the events it cares about. It will receive every event and it only reacts to the ones it cares about. And the reason this is a good idea with React is React is going to give everybody the chance to change, re-render when anything changes about our application. When there's any event at all, any action, Everybody gets the chance to change or update if they want to because React can completely re-render with a virtual DOM every time. And the DOM only gets up up updated. The web page only gets updated when it needs to change the way it appears. Um, since that's the slow part of a JavaScript application is updating the DOM, updating your web page. So that's, uh, that's the React. That, this is the Flux framework. Components fire actions. Actions are only aware of the dispatcher. The dispatcher's job is to be aware of everyone who needs to hear about actions, every single store. The dispatcher pipes that action to every single store. The stores maybe ignore the action, maybe update themselves. They fire update events like, hey, the to-dos list has changed. And then the components listening to those stores update themselves and re-render the application. Constants we'll get into a little later. Some frameworks use this, some frameworks don't. It's just a way of storing action names is all it is because a store might reference an action name and an action might reference an action name. Let me show you what an action actually looks like. Um, an action in an action file will simply say, hey, dispatcher, dispatch this event. I've got an event type. And the dispatcher doesn't really care what this object is. It's just going to pass it through to everybody registered. 
So some people will use type, some people use action type. Um, and so type is basically what your action is called, create to do. And then it might have some additional data to it. So the create to do might have a title. The delete to do might just have an ID associated with it because that's all it takes to delete it to do. Um, and then if a store wants to react to the create to do type, it can. If it doesn't want to, it doesn't have to. So that's Flux. Let's go ahead and actually take our basic to-do list application and convert it to Flux. I've got what we've been working with. I just changed it from articles to to-dos. So we're going to build a to-dos list with the ability to favorite things and then the ability to change settings. You know, maybe show completed will be a setting. Um, and then let's go ahead and look at our code base. In this first video, we're going to be working with two different components. We're working with the to-dos component, which as you guessed, is the entire to-dos list. And then a to-do component, which is a single to-do. Um, and so you should be familiar with this if you've been following along. The to-dos component starts off by setting a state, which has an array of to-dos. So this.state.todos is two to-dos. Um, and then it pulls them in and it maps them out to an array of to-do components. And we're changing one thing. We're using the ID as a key, which is a much better key than in the index in the array. So then we're just spitting out those to-do components. That's all that's really going on. We just want to make this dynamic. So we need to pull this out into a store. Let's go ahead and create our first Flux store. So I have my stores folder here. Let's just save this as to-do store.js. Um, and all a store really does is it just kind of exports an object. Uh, the one thing we need to do is if you remember from Flux, let me go back over here. Components need to be able to listen to actions on the store. Like a component needs to be able to say on to do store change or to do store on change. Uh, do something, right? I need to be able to react when the to-do store has a change event. So to do this, it's really simple. You simply Im import events emitter, which comes with Node.js. This events module is built into Node.js and I can actually just import an event emitter and then extend it. So my to-do store, there we go. So now if I were to create a new to-do store, equals a new to do. And then I can actually go to do store dot on change and then do some handler. So that's good. So now we've got our events done. I can export defaults to do store. So now I'm exporting that. So whenever you import to do store, you're going to get this created instance of to do store. Great. So I've got events going and now let's actually just kind of create my to do's list. Uh, we'll just go super this to do's equals and we'll actually start it off with this fake data we got going on here. Let's just set it to be some fake data. There you go. My to do's are by default two to do's and that's it. And maybe I'll do a get all method. So somebody else can call to do's dot get all and this will just return this dot to do's. Excellent. So that's in the to-do store. Now I can actually take this away and I can actually import my to-do's store. Import. Importing that. And then my default state will be to-do store get all. So that's my initial state. I'm going to start off with a get all and then everything should be working as it was before. Uh, let's go ahead and re-render my page. Excellent, it's working. Let's go ahead and change my to-do store and make sure that that still updates. Uh, pay water bill. It updated. Okay, so my information is coming from the store. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and import a dispatcher, create a dispatcher in this next video so we can actually start dispatching events and changing this store.